As of filming this video, the global mobile market is projected to reach $430 billion by the end of 2022. They say, always follow the money. So I say, we look at where that money went. Let's check out some profitable app ideas to steal. In this video, we're going to look at seven profitable app ideas. We'll look at real life examples of successful apps, but again, I want to focus on the idea behind them. Why? Because you're supposed to take the idea and put your own spin on it. Nobody likes a copycat. All right, on to the first app idea. Hypercasual mobile games. I'm by no means an expert on mobile games, but they're just too big to leave out. As a category, mobile games are the most profitable type of B to C app, but they're also the most expensive to make and maintain. If we look at the list of top grossing mobile games, we'll see some common trends. Number one, extremely high production value. Number two, a lot of multiplayer options. Number three, ranking systems. Number four, huge development teams and high monthly costs. The creator of Mobile Legends is Moontoon Games, who have over 600 employees and is part of the multi-billion dollar ByteDance group. It's great that we get to play these games on our mobile phones but making one from scratch as a non-tech founder isn't really practical, aka impossible. But do mobile games need these high-end features to be profitable? Objectively, no. Three words, hyper-casual games. Wait, that's two words, right? Because of the hyphen? Two words, hyper-casual game. Super basic mechanics, super simple interfaces, super fun, in fact, that simplicity is the selling point. I'm sure you've heard of the amazing story of Flappy Bird, the simplest game ever. All built by just this one dude from scratch in just a few days, and he was making $50,000 daily. Games like this provide a very valuable solution. Brain dead entertainment. You have 10 minutes to kill and want to feel like you're trying without actually having to try. And you still want the reward of completing a task. In other words, you want something to do while on the toilet. Since sitting on the toilet is a very popular activity, there will always be space for a well thought out hyper casual game and I want to show you one especially attention grabbing one. Their ads use the memeiest song I've ever heard. Let's check it out. I think I just found my new ringtone. Let's look at their Google Store downloads. Damn, 10 million. A game like this is going to make money through ads. How much? There's this thing called eCPM, cost per meal, or how much advertisers pay for every 1,000 impressions. So if a 1,000 people see my ads, I pay you this much. Apple Deal has this really cool interactive map where you can see the eCPM for each country. It ranges from 10 USD to 40 cents. Let's be super conservative and say the eCPM for Steve to Dodge is 40 cents. 10 million downloads and say just 20% of active users. So. 2 million people. These 2 million people see just one advertisement a day, every day for a month. Okay, so 2 million people times 30 days divided by 1,000 is equal to 60,000. The app maker gets 40 cents for every 1,000. So 60,000 times 0 0.4, that's 24,000 US dollar a month. If you can pull this off as a one-man team, that's retirement level income. This game is not trying to compete with PUBG. It's way easier to execute technically. You just need to think of something to occupy people for five minutes at a time. By the way, this category is the only one in the list where revenue comes from advertising. For the rest, the apps make most of their money by offering a free version to entice their users, then upselling them to a premium version with additional features. Cloud-based business service. Cloud-based has turned into a bit of a buzzword. But hey, it's an actually useful feature. All it means is that a process is handled by a remote server and database. Say you edit a photo on your phone with a cloud editor. Your phone never does the editing. It sends a request to an online photo editor, which then returns the finished product to your phone. This actually means extra step and won't work without that internet connection. Why would people prefer that? In other words, what problem does it solve? Number one, space. Since the processing isn't done on the phone, it takes up less device space. So users don't have to delete their millions of selfies to make room. Two, quality. 
Again, the processing is done externally, so users are not limited to their phone's processor. Giving someone with a low quality phone access to processors beyond their phone's hardware capability. And the number one reason is number three, integration. Because it's online, cloud-based services are often connected to other users and other clouds, making it super easy to share files. And the example I want to show is e-signature, specifically DocuSign. It allows multiple users to automate signing and sending media files to each other from any device. Over 10 million downloads and the most popular e-signature app on the market. It's no surprise that the biggest user base are businesses who want a simple and secure way to sign official documents. The most recent report in October 2022 show that it made $645 million in revenue. Of course, the scale of the app is huge, but the idea itself is simple. Find a business process that can be simplified through digitization. Why business process? Because businesses always pay for things that help them increase profit or lower cost. Smartwatch friendly apps. Smartwatches are stupidly popular. I think in 2021, it was something like over 100 million units sold. Let me check real quick. Yep, 127.5 million units in 2021, with 42 million in Q4. Of course, not all smartwatches are created equal. The bigger brands will have much stronger processes and some cheaper brands are basically kids toys. But still, whether iOS or Android, these watches run apps. If you can optimize an app interface to fit a really small screen, and it's a problem that can be solved by glancing at your risk, you're tapping into a relatively new market. Speaking of watches running apps, a very good example is running apps. Check out Map My Run by Under Armour. It tracks the total distance and the premium version comes with a live GPS tracking and a bunch of other features, all of which are very accessible via smartwatch. Since it's something you use on the move, it's definitely something people would rather just glance at their watch to find out. Revenue, 14 million US dollar according to Zoom Info. So think, what's a type of app that makes you go, I would pay to have that on my wrist. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video. A list of profitable app ideas can go on forever. What's an app idea you've seen make a lot of money? Leave a comment below. Back to the list. Industry giant alternatives. What happened with Twitter reminded me that nothing is certain. I don't want to go into the details, but I think we all know that in October 2022, Elon Musk bought Twitter and immediately made very unpopular changes. In one month, 500,000 users left for an alternative called Mastodon. Mastodon isn't just a Twitter clone. It's got some truly impressive unique selling points. But I think it's fair to say that for the 500,000 new users, the main selling point was it, it's not Twitter. As far as revenue goes, it's hard to say because Mastodon is crowdfunded and the actual code is open source. Mastodon is a social media app that users pay to use. And so with another half a million users on top of its existing 500,000, it's going to make a lot of money. What's the problem being solved here? Is that sometimes the number one option gets a bit too cocky. They think they can get away with anything and if they are the only option, then maybe they can. But if you are there with a viable alternative, Mastodon has shown that it's a great way to get a huge surge in users and revenue. Warning, never create an app just to be a backup plan. Like I said, Mastodon was already profitable before the whole Twitter thing. So make sure your app has something unique to offer. And if you can combine that with also being a potential alternative, all the better. Social media add-ons. This is much more common and much smarter. Don't go against giants work with them. Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, and I guess now Mastodon. People don't just use them for fun. People use them for business. And businesses don't mind paying for things that help them increase profit or lower cost. So whenever you have a tool or solution that helps people use and understand social media, people will pay for it. If you've ever done any social media marketing, you will know that you will have to use a social media scheduler. And many people also go for the premium packages. But there's much more to social media than automating posts. You have influencer matching, analytics, branding. It's becoming its own industry. I'd like to highlight another app that's unbelievably simple, but solves a huge problem. Because of that, it makes an obscene amount of money. Linktree. It's a link to a page with all your other links. Sometimes on your channel or social media page, you want to advertise all your other pages, but this platform only lets you use one link. While Linktree gives you a link 
to a simple page with all your other links. For this simple solution, Linktree made $16 million in 2022. Can you think of something that can help businesses of all sizes get more out of their social media? Whether it's a solopreneur working from home or a marketing agency with staff all over the world. Marketplace apps. A marketplace app is where you create a space for people to come along and create notices that they want to buy, sell, or trade a product or service. The beauty of them is that they don't have to be beautiful at all. Their main priority is always trustworthiness, ease of navigation, and specificity. How deep into a topic can users go with their search results? To accomplish this, it's always about one word, filter. Hobbies and people in the know about a topic love being able to filter their search results, price, brand, year of production, and any industry-specific or product-specific categories. This way, you don't have to compete with the giants like Amazon and eBay. There's always room for a niche marketplace. People go here to buy and sell one specific thing, whatever that may be. My example of a really specific marketplace is Remote OK. It specializes in job ads for remote working positions across the world and is currently the market leader with an annual revenue of $1.6 million and a tiny headcount of three employees, which is why the founder enjoys a 90% profit margin. 90% of $1.6 million. I use this as an example because I want to show you that you can absolutely find a niche within an industry that has huge demand. If you look at one of their job listings, it already had 260,000 views and 39,000 applications within less than a month of posting. Marketplace apps mix money by charging the seller, or in this case, the employer, a fee to put up a listing. On top of that, the app takes a commission off of any successful sale. Look at the founder's Twitter. Man, he looks exactly like the kind of guy who would found an app about working from home. But hey, if I was that successful, I wouldn't wear a shirt either. Education. So many things are being offered online nowadays. You can learn new languages, music instruments, math, coding, the list goes on. The problem they solve is obvious. They allow learners to learn at their own pace from anywhere they want. Let's take the language example, Duolingo. As of Q3 2022, it's made $96 million. What about the musical instrument example, Simply Guitar? $800,000 US dollar per month. Math42 acquired for $15 million. Disgusting. What do all these learning apps have in common? One, they offer online learning for in-demand topics. Languages, guitar, these are things that people already spend millions to learn before the app's revolution, if you want to call it that. Two, the actual execution always involves topic experts. So with Duolingo, the syllabus of each language is prepared by native speakers. For Simply Guitar, actual guitarists are involved in creating and curating the learning content. Not only does this make the app credible, it helps to deliver results which lead to positive reviews, more users, more results, boom, positive feedback loop. So to anyone watching this video, can you put those two things together? An in-demand learning topic and access to genuine experts for content curation. So let's say you come up with an idea. Then what? Well, you hire an app developer like me to build it. And the very first step is to create a product roadmap. All these successful apps we just looked at, I guarantee you they didn't start looking like this. Apps start out as MVPs, minimum viable products, a basic version of nothing but the most essential features to validate the idea. From there, developers and founders get feedback, make small improvements, add more features, then test again. A product roadmap is how developers plan all that out. And what do you know? I'm a developer and my agency does product mapping for web and mobile apps. What a happy coincidence. Before you start raising millions of seed capital, you should understand what a product roadmap looks like and what goes on during a product roadmapping workshop. Check out my video on how we do product roadmapping here. See you there.